Good evening. Tonight is the September 24th, 2019. We are in Volume 3, Hilchos Yom Kippur, page 373. Another important dimension of Erev Yom Kippur that is unrelated to food is the notion of asking others for forgiveness for wrongdoing. Although Yom Kippur is primarily a day dedicated to receiving atonement from Hashem for our sins, the mission in Yoma emphasized that one must ask for forgiveness directly from other people whom one has wronged in order to receive the atonement for those sins which is commonly done on the day prior to Yom Kippur. Says the mission in Yoma, Avera Shebein Adam Lechavero, sins between man and man, stealing, insulting, saying Loshon Hara, injuring them, Yom Kippur by itself does not have the ability to atone for such a sin until you get the, fr- the friend to forgive you. At Zu Darsh Rabbi Loza ben Azariah, it says in the Parsha in, 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 in uh, Achrimos that we lay on Yom Kippur, which refers to Yom Kippur, that from, for, all, from all of your sins standing in front of Hashem, you shall purify yourself. He says that that refers to our verse in Adam Lamakom, Yom Hakipur Mechaper. That Hashem has the ability to clean up the sins that you do to Him, like you violate Shabbos, you eat on Yom Kippur. Those are not a verse between man and man. Those are a verse between <coughs> man and Hashem. But a verse between Adam Lamakom and Yom Hakipur Mechaper at Shiratz Chaveru. So if one owes money to another as a result of injuring him. The Mishnah and Gemara Baba Kama state that one most, both re, you have to repay him as well as ask for forgiveness in order to receive atonement. It says the Mishnah in, in Baba Kama, Afal Pishu Noisen Lo. So you've now paid him back for what you injured him. Ein Nimcholo Achivakesh Minenu. There's no, there's no Mechila. You have to ask him forgiveness. <coughs> it's not enough to just pay him. Shunamar. The Ata Hashev Eshes period. Yeah, that's when that has to do with when they went to Abimelech's country, right in Eretz Canaan, and again his wife, right he he told Abimelech that his wife was his sister because he, he was afraid that they were going to kill him, and then Abimelech took his took Sarah mm-hmm. again. And then uh, so Hashem tells Abimelech he appears to Abimelech at night. It says, give it back. On the other hand, we're on page 373. On the other hand, if the person did ask forgiveness and the guy didn't forgive him, he's cruel. Because Hashem had closed up all their orifices so that they couldn't go to the bathroom, they couldn't have children. That was what the, was going on in, in the Plishtim area where Abimelech was, until, Ash, until Av, Abimelech mm-hmm. davened and they healed from, from all of that. So, Torah Baruch, Kol Elu Sha'onru, that which we said that you have to pay, that's the Dmei Boshto. So you embarrass, right, there's five, there's Nezek, Tsar, Ripui, Nezek is the actual damage that you did. Like, the guy is worth a thousand dollars with two hands, but he's only worth eight hundred dollars with one hand. So that's nezek. He's actually been depreciated. That's the nezek payment. Then there's ripui, which is the medical bills. Then there's shevet. That's disability. For example, he can't go to work for a week or two. You have to pay him his salary. Then there's boishas upegam. So boishas is like you embarrassed him. Pegam is like pegam mishpacha. Let's say uh, a girl was raped. So that uh, you know the family has suffered a reputational damage. That's pagam. So there's five five different payments when there's nezek involved. It's not just nezek. Most of them have all five of these. So maybe about sorrow. What about pain and suffering? Or the fact that he's sort of the fact that he caused him pain. He could bring all the carbonos in the world. You have to ask forgiveness from the person. Abimelech was told, give back Sarah. He's a Navi. 
And then he'll daven for, uh, for, for you to be here. So based on these psukim, the Rambam, in Hilchos Tshuva, Tshuva codifies this obligation. It's not just Stamazoi. In Hilchos Tshuva, he says there's a chiv to make do vidui. Not only to Hashem, but also to others. Whether you violated, you didn't do an ase. You're supposed to put on tefillin, you didn't put on tefillin. You're supposed to shake the lulav, you didn't shake the lulav. That's being mavatal an ase. Then there's a lot ase. You can't eat nevela, you can't eat chazri, you can't eat chelev, you can't eat dam. Negative prohibition. No matter which one, bein bezod and bein beshkoga, whether you did it bemezid, intentionally, whether you did, you didn't know that the piece of fat was chelev. You thought it was permitted fat. You eat it, and then somebody tells you, oh, you know, that was chelev. So whether you did it bezmezid, whether you did it beshkoga, kishiyasa tshuva, biyoshi becheto, chayev lizvados. Besides doing the tshuva, and the Rambam is going to go through a whole process of what does tshuva mean. Tshuva means harata, you have regret. You have to actually place yourself in the same situation you once ate at McDonald's because you were walking by a McDonald's and you just lusted after that her Big Mac. You have to actually be in the same location and sort of overcome your desire for that as part of the sort of requirement for tshuva. But besides that, besides the tshuva, you have to, vidui is part of it. Chayv lizvados. Lifnei baruchu. That's some of what we do on Yom Kippur. The Hasham news, the Bagad news, the Alchets. That sort of takes care of, of the Vidui aspect because even though we might have done Tshuva, without Vidui, you haven't gotten Mechila. Chayel is Vados of the El Baruch Hushinemar, Isho Isha, Kiyasu, Kol Achatois, right? The Posuk says Kol Achatois. Vizvadu, you have to confess, as Chatosom Asher Azu, Ze Vidui Dvorim. He says Vidui Ze Mitzvah Saseh. That's Vidui Bukurim. No, that's Vidui Meisner. That was especially mm-hmm. call it vidui, that but that that was a different thing. That was he has a certain amira that you had to say. That's the arami over davi, and then you had to say, you know, remember in the in the, in the year one of the shemitah of the shemitah cycle, you got to give meiser rishon and meiser sheni, and then and same thing in, in year two, and, and besides the truma, then in, in the third year you have to give meiser oni. The second meiser, instead of it being meiser sheni, that you have, you belong and you get to take to your shalim and eat it, you gave it as tzedakah. So there are all these might you got to give truma, you got to give truma as meiser, meiser risha, meiser sheni. The vidu meiser was lo I, I I took care of all my debts. Lo achalti I didn't eat as an own name. There's a certain his vadus there regarding meiser. Here we're talking about vidu dvarim regarding yom kippur, doing meaning the, the mitzvah of tshuva on yom kippur. And he says that's a mitzvah saseh. Now comes the the, the 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 kicker for us, because we've been dealing with the sugya of Beinodam al Khavero. The You wounded your friend, or Hamazik Mamono. You you damaged his property, you burnt his field, right? You were negligent, you lit a you you, you had a barbecue in your backyard, but it spread to the neighbor's backyard. So you're a mazik. You damaged his field, you have to pay him. There's a certain damage. But even though there's a monetary payment, you paid him what he damaged. Um, you have to say you're not going to do it again, but you have to ask forgiveness from the guy, and the guy has to forgive you. The Kes of Mishnah, who is Rav Yosef Karo, right, who was the main commentator on the Rambam, understands that the Rambam's source for this ruling in the Mishnah is Bobakama that we cited above. <coughs> Hence, whether a person damages another property or injures the person himself, right, he's choivel in the in the goof, or his mamayim, even if he pays compensation for the damages, he does not receive atonement until he appeases the other individual. Because the Rambam didn't say that. <clears throat> now, now, look at the footnote. In contrast to the Kes of Mishnah, the Merkevita Mishnah, which is another comment, commentary on the Rambam, claims that the Rambam here never refers to asking forgiveness from the person. Rather, the Rambam's use of the language of vidui indicates that he means one must recite vidui before That's Hashem, right. even regarding mitzvahs bein adam l'chaveru. Right. And as you notice, in, that, in those vidui, there's a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I said lashon hara, I, 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 you know, there's a lot of bein adam l'chaveru things. So you see, <coughs> there's a debate what the Rambam held. But let's see what the Kesef Mishnah says. V'chein <laughs> 
And he says, Mishnah Baba Kama, that we just learned. So the Kesef Mishnah seems to be understanding the Rambam, that the Rambam is referring to, remember, the whole limud of the Rambam. What did all the, these great uh, Mefarshe HaRambam, what did they spend most of their time doing? It was never clear where did the Rambam get many of his halas. Sometimes it's very clear. So, so, so uh, the first take a Gemara or whatever. But many halachas of the Rambam, it's really unclear where actually took it. So if you go through the various Mephorshim, you know, where where's, where the Rambam get this from? So so the Kesef Mishnah seems to suggest that he's getting it from this Mishnah in Baba Kama. However, this, the, the way the Kesef Mishnah learned here in Hilchus Tshuva Aleph, see, it seems to be supported by another lacha in Perak Bays of Hilchus Tshuva, where the Rabbim seems to repeat the same idea. The power of Yom Kippur, where we always talk about itzumo shel yom, right? There's, you know, that just going through Yom Kippur itself, without even you doing anything, you have certain kapor. Some things you will not, but the, 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 the certain uh, power, that's the itzumo shel yom, all of those things are only, says the Rambam. Wait, if, just a if you curse somebody, you know, to yourself, you know, within yourself, in other words, not outwardly, in front of the person or something, but you really, you, in your mind, you speak better about someone. In you your mind, well, here or is love is love that Here or is love kedibur domi. That's between you, uh, you and Hashem, basically, in that case. Why? You didn't do anything to Hashem. No, but no, here you think better about somebody. Yeah, but here or is, you, is, you didn't say Lashon No, you didn't okay. say anything. You have to speak it out. Not there, that's a problem in the Machshava and the Kavona, the Kavona. It's a problem in your... In your Midos. In Midos. So then that would be between... You still haven't Midos. harmed your friend with that. No, 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 you didn't. But I say, it, does it affect Olam Damokom? In other words, is that something that... Yeah, because Lotisna Sachicha Bilvavecha. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm saying. So, so, that, so it is Olam Damokom. Yeah, but the question case. is, are you required to ask forgiveness for that? You know, from the person... You know, I was thinking... Remember we had the run. Yeah, yeah, who was there, Sydney? Do you remember the the shear we had two weeks ago from that uh, guest rabbi, who talked about that whole thing about should you, if you said lashon hara about somebody, but you, he had never heard about it, should you call him up on the phone and say, you know, I said something. No, remember, no. there's the whole debate where you should not. Yeah. Yeah. Were you there that week? Yeah. Right. Where, you, where the, certainly the Mershner Chavetz Chaim said you should you. Sh- you should call him. And then the, everyone yeah, argued with him. Yeah, that yeah. Taste that you should make him tsar by telling him right, something that right, he didn't right, know. Right, exactly. So it could be totally in that in this debate. Mm-hmm. So let's see what the uh, the set in Perak Bays of Ilchas Tshuva, how the Rambam seems to reinforce his idea. It says um, that the Itzumo Shal Yom of Yom Kippurim only has the part El Laver Shemin Adam Lamakom Kagon Misha Achad Over Oser He Ate Dam or Chelav. Obal bi'ila asura, he cohabited with someone he's not supposed to cohabit with. The kayotzebeh and other similar sins. Aval haveru shebein al machaveru. If you go to hachovel as chaveru, you wound somebody. Oh, hamekalal chaveru, but you were mekalal him bepeh. You cursed him out. Right. <clears throat> oh, gozlo, you stole from him. Eno nimcha lo la olam ad shitel chaveru mashu chayv lo. Number one, you have to pay him back. Mm-hmm. And number two, you're the Yerd Segu. You have to ask an apology and you have to ask for forgiveness. And Avopi Shehichzir Lemomon Shukhaev Lo, Tsarchler Tsoso. You have to sort of apologize. Really show me when a Shimchalo. Afilo Hikni this Chavero Elabidvarim. Even if he only offended his friend with words, he still has to appease him. Tsarchler Faiso, if Agea bought him in Cholo. So that seems to be very similar to what the Rabbis said. However, the explanation of the Kesar of Mishnah is difficult due to a diff- different ruling of the Rambam. The Rambam in, in Hilchos Choyvel Omazik, right, by Mominus, explicitly states that if one damages another property, as soon as one pays the damages, he receives atonement, mm-hmm. as opposed to if he damages the person himself. So there the Rambam is going to make a chiluk between if you damage property or if you, damage, if you it, wound or injure your friend. There, since it's also, you might have caused a monetary loss 
but you, you were pregea in his goof, there you'd have to ask forgiveness from him as well. But the Rambam's going to say that if you damaged his field or his ox, that once you pay him back, you don't need to do anything else. And the Kesef Bishop seemed to suggest that whenever you damage even his mamoin, it's sort of a personal affront, you have to ask forgiveness from him. Says the Rambam, the Rambam says very clearly, if you damaged his property once you pay him back, you have atonement. Remember the Chamisha Dvorim. Sheves, Ripui, Boykem, Begam, we talked about it. Ain miskaper lo. He's not half kapora, because you've got to get Ritsui from him. Afilu hikriv kol ele nevoyas. You brought all the korbonis that nevoyas brought. Ain miskaper lo, v'lo nimcho limo, avono, ad shivakis, v'lo nimcho v'yimcho. So, in contrast, to, in contrast to the Kesav Mishnah, the Lecha Mishnah distinguishes between the two types of damaging of a person's asset. The first is where one steals from another. In this case, it is considered a more direct attack on the person. And the perpetrator, so now we're, we're talking about, we're not choivu begufo. Stealing from somebody is also really just damaging his mamoin. But the, 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 the Lecha Mishnah is saying that that is similar. And that you would require personal forgiveness from if you stole from them. That's a more sort of a direct personal affront. However, we only damaged another's property. You didn't steal from him. You burnt his field. You, you damaged his ox. He's exempt as soon as he pays compensation for the damage. Let's see the Lecha Mishnah inside. That's there by in, in uh, Mominus. Shamazik Momen Chavero. Afagav de Bilchus Tshuva. And the Lecha Mishnah itself points out this discrepancy the discrepancy that we now are seeing between the sheet of the Rabbim in Tshuva versus here. Avil pi gabe de bilchos tshuva perik beis kos of Rabbeinu. Rabbeinu refers to the Rambam. Da goizel es chaveiro. Eino miskaperlo. That if you steal from him. Eino miskaperlo elin yuratzel in exile. You have to ask his forgiveness if he fights or so. Avil pi shei shiv lozli. Even though you already returned what you stole. So, so which is l'chora akasha because in Choyvah Lamazik, it seems to say that if you just damage his property, you don't have to ask him. So this is where Lecha Mishnah is making Tzvei Dinin. There's a, the difference between Gzela versus others. Yesh Loimer, the shiny Gazlan, the Nisanim Oisa Avera. So first of all, a Gazlan has benefited from the Avera. He, he stole from the guy, and he had a good time with whatever he stole. The Od, Shetzier Har It's sort of a more of a pain. And you remember, a ganif, the difference between a ganif and a goslin, a ganif sneaks in at night without anybody seeing him. Is that what we're to make a goslin is when you Brave. stick somebody up. You, 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 you take it directly from him. So, so <clears throat> for example, I, I burn a guy's field. I don't necessarily da- benefit from that. So, who you did damage him, but the one who did the damage didn't have any specific anoth through the fact that I, 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 his, his ox fell into my pit mm-hmm. and, da- and broke its leg. Once you pay the guy off for that type of damage, you don't need to ask forgiveness for it. So that's why there's a difference between uh, why he said over here by Choyvel Mazik that he doesn't need to ask forgiveness, but over there by Gazlan he would. Now, regardless of how one interprets the Rambam, it's clear that one must ask forgiveness from another for sins that are in the category of Ben Adam Chavero to achieve complete atonement. Therefore, it's not surprising that the Shulchan Aruch and the Rambam, when they came to codify these halachas, the Shulchan Aruch, discussed the details of this halach about asking forgiveness. Where do they do it? They don't do it by choy v'lomama. They do it by the, the laws of Yom Kippur. And as the Ramon notes, the custom is to ask for forgiveness on Erev Yom Kippur. I mean, you don't have to wait to Erev Yom Kippur. If you damaged somebody six months ago, you can go to him the next day and ask forgiveness from him. There's a custom. If you didn't do it, you do it on Erev Yom Kippur. Aver Shabinam says the Machaber, Aver Shabinam says the Machaber, Yom Kippur Machaber, Ad Shifai Senu. You just sort of uh, insulted him with words. This is where we get this thing. The Shulchan says 
You got to go three times. Yeah. You should do it in front of three people. You don't have to go on it. You, 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 you did what you had to do. Mm -hmm. If you did it three times for three people, that's enough. The Ramah or the Ramah says he, 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 he you could tell to tell the people that he did it instead of doing the three by three. The Imurabo, what if it's his Rabbi? There is no limit. It's not, this limit of three is only by regular guy. But if it's your Rabbi. By the Rabbi, is the problem on the Rabbi's part? Yeah, because we already said that you're an Achzar if you don't give right. Mechila. Would they have a product of there and three? It's a worse sin if you did it from you. Also, you have the problem of keeping. Well, they have the same gather. Just says the Ramah to answer what Bernie said. The Hamoicha lo yachzari melimcho. The Rebbe is going to is no shulchan aruch. He knows this Ramah, so he's not going to be an achzar. Imlo shemakavin letovas hamavakish mechila. He wants to say, psychologically, sometimes it, the Rebbe might think that it's a good thing that he's coming to ask forgiveness. Maybe he needs to do it a little bit more. Oh. You know, as opposed to, for good example, for it's good for him. Exactly. <laughs> Means, if you if somebody gave Loshon Har against you, you're not Machayev to forgive him. And you could, you could no, 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 Rebbe. absolutely not. He's talking about anybody. A moichel. He's talking about anybody that you're asking mechila for. He's giving general advice that somebody who is being asked mechila from should not be cruel and withhold it. But he's saying that if the sin that was done to you was slander, then you, you don't. You're not required to forgive him. So that's the, that's the severity of lashon hara. Fraction on page seven doesn't count. Imei sasher chatolo. What if the you, you, you had done an Aveira against somebody and he died? So maybe So that's not just a it's not just a shtick that's used in a movie like in Fiddler on the Roof or whatever. It's halacha. You have to bring ten people to his grave. The Omer Khatasi Leloke Israel Uliploni Zesha Khatasi Lo. And you know the custom piece, some people go to the uh, cemetery. cemetery, Erev Yom Kippur, <coughs> perhaps it's the source of this, because uh, people have to go to do that kind of mechila, so it started to be accustomed to go to Erev Yom Kippur to and take care of them. also by Adel they have mechila also, and it's supposed to be by the family member you bury. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well that's often because at the end of life, you didn't, maybe you didn't provide the nursing care you were supposed to, whatever, so people ask like that. So the Mishnah Brura elaborates on the importance of this obligation as it relates specifically to Erev Yom Kippur. Even though it actually applies all year round, as we said. You have a chiv every day. You're not supposed to let a guy hang there and not, and not ask forgiveness. Lemisha posha kenegdom komakom im ein lo p'nai who mantin the fight so al yomachet? Right, he can if he doesn't have time, he can wait another day. Well, the erev yom kippur mechuyev letake that call. You can't go into yom kippur though with all this hanging. Mm -hmm. That means he understands the person's busy. You got to wait till the next day, whatever. But by erev yom kippur, that's it. The buck stops here. You got to take care of it. Today she tired me kol avanoisam. Otherwise, you're going to go into yom kippur without uh, a, a clean slate. Kidetziv kiva yom azeich after alechem mikol chatosecha. The Koshikin and Yeshbi Yodom and Agezel, the Ona, you actually are, have still the profits yeah. of overcharging or stealing, and you're using the Chodavra and Ogeba Momen, Yira Lesakeng. You have to fix it. Well, if you overcharge somebody. The Zeo Mekatri got God all Adam. If Hashem sees you're Davening on Yom Kippur and you've got some money in your house that doesn't belong to you, that's the biggest Mekatri, it's the biggest prosecutor mm -hmm. that can be, get rid of it. Theft. And you have the product of theft in your house. That's the, the first prosecutor that's going to go in on Yom Kippur to, to, to uh, challenge you. What are you saying? 
No, if you let's say you overcharge someone, right, and the person is not aware that any any overcharge is what? anything. He's not aware that you overcharge. He's he's not, not, yeah, but he, he, just because he's not aware does not does not make you you are over or not, and you have to go and pay him back. Of time would go chase after people. He had a store in Raden, and if somebody he, he would chase after people all the time, giving money back. And let's say a person has a claim against somebody. And you have to let him know. The guy may not know about it. You should lay it out in front of a Bezdin or a Rav. And you should ask, how should I do? He says, when it comes to money, the yates are hard. They're always, you'll always have ways to justify why you're keeping the money. Be, be lenient regarding this and just give the money back. It, it, it's the way to be. The Bach adds that one must specify the sin. You know, like we're always going up to people, yeah, be moichel me, be moichel me, no. The Bach says you have to be very specific. You have to ask specific. He has to specifically tell the person, this is what I did to you, and this is what I'm asking forgiveness for. That which we said that you have to outline the sins you did, in his confession, just like we go through that whole litany in front of Hashem, you got you to gotta detail in detail what you did to your friend. This issue of being mefared is no different. Okay. Very interesting. The laws of fasting on Yom Kippur. When the Torah describes the various prohibitions of Yom Kippur, it doesn't say exactly what's included. It uses the word inui, which means to afflict. This is an emor, which in the, the, in the Parsha Samoadois first talks about Rosh Hashanah, then talks about Yom Kippur, and then talks about the inisem. So, what's inisem? So, the Gemara in Yuma in, uh, uh, on 74b teaches that the term afflict oneself refers to eating and drinking. In addition, the Gemara says, Inui includes not bathing, not anointing <coughs> oneself with oil, not to wear leather shoes, or having relations. The Sefer Chinuch explains why is fasting and affliction necessary on a day designated for receiving atonement. So as usual, the Sefer Chinuch starts off by saying, Mishor Shea Mitzvah. What is at the root of this mitzvah? Shayim <laughs> So this is a huge chesed that Kosh Baruch Hu does with the people he created, that he provides one day that you can get on with your life. You don't wallow in sin, but you can clean up your sin it's a, and then a person can start anew. So, so therefore we've been given a mitzvah as part of this to afflict ourselves. Food and drink. V'yeser hanos chush hamishush and other, I would call them, sensory pleasures, right? Things that you do with touch. This will awaken our physicality. We will continue to follow our desires and sin. And an Eved, who's coming in, in judgment in front of his master, by having eaten and drinking, so your 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 soul has been affected by it. And right, we say Basher Husham, right? By Yishmael. Why did why did why did Hashem listen to Yishmael there? Because at that time he was innocent, he was crying, Hashem listened to him. And it says Kash Basher Husham. And we lay that on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, not on the second day, we lay in the Akeda. What's the Basher Husham there? To show be, uh, you're judged the way you are. So Rosh Hashanah, you're in a kittel, or you're davening, and you, so you have the opportunity to, 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 to have, be justified in din, because Hashem will, will judge you the way you are. And if you're not eating and drinking that day, 
your, your soul will be more purified. So you, to your, your, your soul that has, is the seat of wisdom. There's always a struggle between our physicality and our soul. So weaken your physicality a little bit on one day. So you will be able to receive appropriately its atonement. You won't be dragged after your desires. So, as is well known, the prohibition against eating and drinking is considered the most severe of the five afflictions. Because, as in contrast to the other ones, it's the only one that you get kares for violating it. For example, if you don't wear leather shoes or you wash your hands, there's no kares. You're not allowed to do it, but there's no punishment of kares. It's only if you eat or drink the right shear that there's kares. Due to its importance, we're now going to focus on eating and drinking. The Shulchan Aruch summarizes the practical alaf. Which is the size of a large date, which is a little bit less than an egg. He says, A little bit less than an egg. We'll see what is that shear in our time. We'll go through all that. Whether it's a midget or whether it's a uh, little chamberman. Where lechura, you know, they each have a different stomach. A koisevus is a shear for everybody. Mm-hmm. You can't eat anything because chatsi shear is osir in a Torah. You won't get punishment. For example, you eat half a kazais of chema. You don't get uh, the malchus, but you're not allowed to eat it. And it's not midrabanan. The, the din that you can't eat anything. Of a of a dover osir is is chazik shir osir in the Torah. So according to Shulchan Aruch, eating food according to the amount of a koseves on Yom Kippur renders one liable to kares, while the consumption of any amount of food violates a Torah prohibition. Chazik shir osir in the Torah. Okay. Now, what about if a person can't fast? In general, the prohibition against eating on Yom Kippur is so severe that one may eat only if there's a potential danger to life. Now, this seems to be straightforward, but in truth, the question of is who is considered to be in danger when fasting is complex. And there's significant discussion among the post regarding this issue. And we were going to address three different cases of individuals who are potentially in this category. What about pregnant or nursing women? So a common issue that arises in Yom Kippur is how pregnant and nursing women should observe Yom Kippur. On one hand, they certainly must take into consideration the fact that they are responsible for the well-being of another life, which is the fetus. But on the other hand, it seems a bit extreme to say that there's a danger in life. To, you know, the, there's always a danger in fasting. So according to the Gemara Psachim, a pregnant or nursing woman must fast normally on Yom Kippur, as well as on Tisha B'Av. Right? Dorash Rava and Psachim, Ubarois, pregnant women, Umenikos, nursing mothers, Misanos, Umashlimos both. They have to fast, they have to finish the fast. This is referring to Tisha B'Av. And just like by Yom Kippur, that they have to finish the fast, and they have to fast, the same thing is by Tisha B'Av. And, and Ben Hashemoshes as well is Osir. So Chazal felt that an otherwise healthy pregnant or nursing woman will not place herself or the baby in danger by fasting on Yom Kippur. However, the Gemara provides certain limitations to the Salacha in specific cases that were considered Danger. Says the Mishnah, Ubra Shehericha. A pregnant woman, all of a sudden she had a desire for pickles and ice cream. Mm-hmm. Right? They have the, you know, they, they smell something mm-hmm. and they absolutely have to have it. And Machilin also, Ad So you're allowed to feed her that item. Does it say what month this is? No. No? Mm-hmm. Beyond 40 days, certainly. And now, a sick person, you wait for an expert. An expert here refers to the doctors. If a doctor determines that the chola has to eat, I get dozens of quest calls right before Yom Kippur because of all the kidney stone patients. They want to know, can they drink? And the rabbis call, etc. Because when you have kidney stones... If you're not drinking fluid, you could form another kidney stone. So, so that's always a big issue. Now let's say there is no doctor to consult. 
You ask the person himself. The person, no one knows a person better than himself. And if he feels like he's, he's, he needs to eat, you can feed him. Mm-hmm. Now the Gemara explains, Torah Bonan. Uber Sherich of Sarkodesh, Obsar Chazir, she smells some pork, and she's got to have the pork. It was thought that it's life threatening. Look what they do. First, they put a straw in the juice. They just apply a little bit of her on her on her lip. So this has to do more with like a mental problem. We're talking about Yishu Vadas in Vadaita. If she calms herself down with just having the taste of the the pork juice on her lips, mutav, you don't have to go any further. Bim love. Machilos or rotavatsma, you give her the, the gravy. Bim nisyash for daita mutav. Bim lav, machilato shumanatsma, you give her the you give her the the, the, the shtick pork itself. Shela chodover sha oimiv de pikuach nefesh, chutzma void zar, begilu ya rice or shrikh's dummy. And this is an example of pikuach nefesh. Now, we don't really understand. Rashi explains, what do you mean, ubra she richa? How uber me riach reach tav shil umisavilo. Somebody, she walks by the, the uh, McDonald's and she the smells, embryo smells not it. the pregnant, no, the woman, pregnant the embryo. woman. The, 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 the fetus. He says the fetus smells. The fetus smells it. Okay. How does the fetus smell? How does the fetus smell? It doesn't tell you how old it is. Now, vim eina ochel es shnehen mesukonim. And if the mother doesn't need it, they're both in danger. So according to the Gemara and Rashi's interpretation, and the fetus is the a woman who has a severe craving for specific yeah, food is considered, considered to be in sufficient danger to warrant allow eating on the air of Yom Kippur. It seems from Rashi, I'm reading the footnote, that the leniency applies because of the potential danger to the mother. The Rosh notes that some Rishonim hold that if there is danger to the fetus alone, the mother would not be permitted to eat. But he disagrees and argues that it is permitted. He also claims that in actuality, there's no such way of danger to the fetus where the mother is not also in danger. It means if the fetus is in danger, the mother's in danger. And points to this comment of Rashi as proof that you see, it's the fetus that's smelling it and wanting it, but the mother has to have it because they're both in danger. Now, the Shulchan Aruch cites the basic halacha about pregnant and nursing women, as mentioned in the Psachim, as well as these leniencies. Says the Shulchan Aruch, Uberos menikos misanos mashlimis yom so the basic halach is they have to fast. Now, uber sheiricha. And then the Ramah adds, upanea mishtanim. She turns white. That means it, you have to see some kind of physical response in the woman where it, it suggests it's, huh? It could be per se too. Okay. I'm saying, upanea mishtanim. And if you see her face change, even if she doesn't say, I need it, we have to be concerned about her health. So the first thing you do is, you say to her, you know, it's Yom Kippur today. Can you hold on? Now, based on that, just being told that it's Yom Kippur, and she sort of takes hold of herself, in this Kaira if she's able to sort of calm herself down, the Zikaron Zemutav, the Imlav Machilonosa, Achetisiyav Daito. So the case described in the Mishnah Shulchan Aruch of the serious craving is not common nowadays. Do people really go around saying, oh, I need to have this, otherwise I'm going to die? So he understands that. Nevertheless, we see from here that in the case of a specific danger, a pregnant woman would be permitted to eat. This is very relevant, as there are many instances where a doctor may be concerned that a specific complication with regard to the pregnancy may cause danger to the mother or fetus by fasting. Whatever it is, maybe she has a urinary tract infection. Maybe she has placenta previa, which, you know, maybe she has some diagnosis where they understand that lack of nutrition will make things worse or whatever. So Rav Simcha Rabinovich, in which, who we've seen many times before in the Piskei Chuvos, says, and who is a contemporary posseg, Afiz Banenu, Shenech L'Shu HaDoros, V'tanis Yom Shalom Yeshbo Sikun Masuyim L'Hapolo Ololeda Mukdemes. He says, as the generations have gotten more la- later, we are weaker. And therefore, it seems even fasting one day could lead to a miscarriage or to a premature birth. He says it doesn't make a difference. They have to fast. Mm-hmm. So it has to do with Chazaka. If she's had two miscarriages in the past due to fasts, 
So then she doesn't have to fast anymore. It's a chazaka. Oh, im rofe mamli tzles sorla. Es atzum ekev chol she yisera. Or if a doctor says, because of weakness, she shouldn't fast. Or, dimum bleeding, or tziri mugdamim, or early contractions, v'chayot zebezeh, halil nigromapo, which might lead to a miscarriage or later mugdames, so that's, uh, she can eat. V'din muberes hi mishashi yodas meher yona, this is what Walter pointed out, the moment she knows about her pregnancy, that's when the din starts. Even it's not even 40 days. Not like what I said. Let's say she finds out at day 30 that she's pregnant. They have the tests now. You can find out early. Now, it's very rare that at that early stage that they're going to have a, a, a that's medical very, problem. That's strange that you would just come through that like after 30 days or even, you know, like you find out. 15 days later or 20 days later when she's pregnant, it comes up to her and she fasts. So that's not... No, but, but the question is, a 20-day-old, a, a woman who's pregnant 20 days is not going to be sick. Very few doctors are going to say, oh, she yeah, needs to eat. Yeah, but, 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 but the fact that the Chachamim shows you that a, a, a Nehemiah that was pregnant, even though it's 10 days or 15 days or it's before 90, is... is, is cons- yeah, is Chachamim. We don't just allow, even before 40 days, no, saying, we don't matir abortion, no, stamazoi. There has to be a reason for it. I'm saying that as far as, as, as um, abortion, because we always say until they do whatever, they're not considered anything. It's, it's no, it's not so. The Rav Moshe was very machmir regarding abortion even before 40 days. It was considered ritzicha. If a coin was an anesthesiologist, there's truth is about. If a coin is the is the OB or even the anesthesiologist who's a messiah, he is, is, could never do it again because he considered them a rotzeah. Is that is that, is that, is that a, a, a psak that Rav Moshe? I understand, but there's other people that all Abso- Abso- absolutely and allowed it before I, forty I days. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm saying over here, it's mashma from what we're learning now, right? That the chachamim held that it was. It's not just a simple case. I agree. By the way. When we say before 40 days, Maya Ba'am and all that, they can't choose to do an abortion on will. There also, there was always a reason. She's going to get sick. It's going to be depression. Like if there was a Tay-Sex but, child. But, but, there's always a... There's but, a it's, it can't just be but, stomazoid. But, we, but the reason that... The, the, the stuff that comes out usually is that it's not considered a living um, whatever substance. It's Maya Ba'am. So if that is the case, so then why is this? Then they should have put 40 days, some kind of a term limit. No, I'm agreeing with you. This is a riot that a, a, that a, a, a pregnancy of even one day is a pregnancy. Absolutely. That, that's why I brought the Rav Moshe, because he's he's he, 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 was, he, was, he was not uh, like of those that... But, the Tzitz Eliezer was a little bit more mock. It depends on different posts. anybody who's Regarding what? About, about that she can eat something. There's nobody's choyle kind of. No. We didn't, well, let's see the Pischei Tshuva. We didn't move beres him mishashi yodas me mer yona. Afilu shadayin lo avro abarim yom le ronya. Umu beres sha asru lo lots of yom ha-kippurim trich lis yatsim rofe im dai lo shtia b'shi'urim. So first of all, when you have to ask the doctor whether maybe it's enough to eat pachas pachas me kishir. Maybe she has to eat a full shear. Or maybe she has to eat normally. So the Pischi Tshuva notes. Can I just ask you? Yes. I have a bit of a problem with the, the, the Pischi Tshuva saying that we become weaker. And perhaps we become weaker spiritually or religiously. But certainly we're not weaker from a physical point of view that you have to give into a type and eat something just because a woman is pregnant. And has the, suddenly I don't think he says about Taiva. He says, he says, for some reason, for some reason, Tainus Yom Shal and Yeshbo Sikun Mesuyum Apollo Leleva Mugdemas. In our generation, it's. Well, well, it, it, no, we, all previous generations based right, on that. Well, we don't know. We, health, see, uh, see, I would say like this. He's saying there seems to be an increased risk of premature delivery and miscarriage 
with fasting. Perhaps that's been developed through, you know, they've kept data that way. But 200 years, 200 years ago, it may have been exactly the same. No, but you're looking at it from the wrong, the, the basically, I think what he's saying, he mentioned the Jewish uh, Hadoyas, is basically in the old days, a person ate two meals a day, they didn't have a lot of food. So fasting... Was not a big deal. Was not a big deal. The reason why it's weaker today is because fasting... Because of plenty that we have. a big deal because, because people eat and drink all the time. Way, way too and much. Is people that, had to starve back then. No, no, they weren't nourished right. as well. No. They probably starved on a normal on a regular basis. They yeah. didn't have food yeah. like and we do. Was, it was a, 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 right, words, that could that be it could be a spark. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 I don't know. Just some of the meals were weak of starvation. I think your 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 that specific cases such as complications in previous pregnancies, bleeding, or other medical conditions would all be valid reasons to consider her as being in potential danger if she would fast. However, all cases should be discussed with the OBGYN as well as the rabbi to see that, in fact, there's a need for leniency. Even if a pregnant woman began to fast at some point, feels dizzy or weak, contractions, or any other symptom, she should certainly eat or drink immediately at least initially less than she or, she or him, and perhaps more if necessary. Now, with regarding to nursing women, the idea is that if she's, she's not hydrating herself, she's not going to produce as much mm-hmm. milk. And here the sakon is for the child, not for her. Mm-hmm. Right? The issues that arise do not generally affect the mother as seriously if she's healthy, mm-hmm. but certainly would affect the baby, as if the mother does not have sufficient milk due to the fast, the ba- baby would go hungry. The Bir Allah cites the Ba'er Hete, who cites the Dvar Shmuel, who is lenient in such a case as well. The child's life will be put in danger to the fast, and there are no other options exist. What does that mean? So he's, the Bir Allah says, Uber Sumenikos Misanus Mashlimos Vim Yesh Lahamenika. If the nursing mother yell and chola, if the child is sick, or Masukin, the Aina Rotzelik in general has a heart problem nursing, Ki and Mimenik. And for example, let's say they won't take from the bottle. Because we're going to see, giving them formula is a way not to have this issue. But there's some ch- children who, fortunately, it's not that common, but there are young, premature, for example, and other who don't, will not feed other from the mother. And and therefore, if she would fast and not produce more milk, it's a sakona for the child. The leniency concerning nursing mothers is not one to be applied sparingly. So the Chazon Ish seemed to be very lenient regarding this. Rather, in any case of uncertainty, where the fast may cause the baby to suffer, one may be lenient, which is interesting. Nowadays, but another option exists that was not available in the time of the Chofetz Chaim, who suggested that the baby's nurse from another nursing mother, which certainly would not be done today, Today, a mother can give the baby formula with a bottle if the baby cannot nurse for some reason. Is it permitted for the mother to eat on Yom Kippur if the baby could simply be given formula instead? So the Piskei Chub addresses this issue. He says that he quotes the Chazonish that we just learned, cause of Shastam Tinat Basukan Waitzel Chalav, that regarding milk, even any child is in some way danger. The Koshyesh Sofik Shemi Yigor Matino Kilko, if there's any kind of doubt that there'll be some damage to the child, Mayayim katsirus, like stomach problems, constipation, or shilshul diarrhea, or chom fever, kosho ayyadeh shinui bederch haznoso, in the normal way of nourishing the child. Hariyus sofik pikuach nefesh, umachalam azeh da shabbos. Ulufizeh, hu adin lin yom hakipurim. Im ayyadeh atzom yismai da cholov, if through the fasting the milk will be depreciated, o yifzak lagamre, vatinik yitzterach l'shanus are regle haznoso, and even if all of a sudden now the, the child has to switch the normal ways it gets its nourish. Ulishtamis petachlipin and to now go with formulas, the exchanges. So the Piskei wants to say he has the right to, to, to the, preg- the nursing mother has the right to drink. That means the nourishment potential is very similar to mother's milk. They're better formula. Therefore, we don't have to worry that maybe the, the milk will stop. 
Tfukaso, the Isvia Satinic, or maybe the child will not have enough, he won't be satiated. Elik Shatinic, Rogish Vakayim Chashash, Shloy Akel, or maybe he won't digest the problem. Now, if you the baby is sensitive with this, well, he might not digest it, so then, of course, you might have to use mother's milk. That anyways, doctors know that um, they can drink. They don't, they don't have to eat. eat. They're saying that Meinekes doesn't have to eat food. Drinking fluid is enough to keep the milk flowing. Mm-hmm. And if the doctors think it's enough to give her pochos pochos mekeshir, she says, pochos pochos mekeshir, lo tishtei yoysu mikach. Vadim she'osur olechaz abesa kneses, in kaim chashash bilal zeta volam atzav shetzach lishnos. How about this? He says, the woman should stay home. Because if she comes to shul and it's a hot day and she's going to get dehydrated, and now all of a sudden she's going to look for a heter to drink, no, mm-hmm. stay home. Better stay home and fast than put yourself into that experience. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. Sub, up until now, we talked about a pregnant woman and we talked about a nursing woman. What, what about a yoledes? Although, as we have seen, the one who is pregnant must fast normally, as long as there's no complications. All agree that a woman who is a yoledes, a woman who has just given birth, is permitted to eat as she is considered to be in danger, as is brought by the Shulchan Aruch. Now, how much time, what, how many, what, how long is she considered a yoledes? So, yoledes toch shloshi yomim lo So, within the first three days, now we're going to see, what is the three days? Is it me ace la ace, 72 hours from when she gave birth? Or is it a chumrah? So, is it, for example, you know, she gave birth on a Wednesday. So, uh, you know, at uh, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, that's already her first day. Then you have Thursday and Friday. So if, if Yom Kippur came, she's on Shabbos, she already has to fast. Or, let's say, let's say it was, let's say actually she gave birth six 7 p.m., Wednesday when it's like when it's still we haven't changed the clock or it's still early, so Yom Kippur is going to start uh, Friday night. So it's going to be set. Yom Kippur will fall within the seventy-two hours this way. So technically, there would be a difference whether you go me le ace or whether you count it for three days. Because if Yom Kippur starts within her seventy-two hours, she certainly would not have to start fasting. Now we're going to see with this halacha, even if she can start eating once the seventy-two hours go, she has to start fasting. It's not like once you have a heter, you have a heter the whole day. We'll see that inside. That's a very interesting alarm. Mm-hmm. So, a woman that is permitted to eat as she's considered in danger. The Shulchan Aruch discusses the extent. You let us talk shlosh yomim lo zisanek klal. Now, mishlosha ad shiva, from three to seven days, im amr tzrichani machil nosa. So then we, we ask her, do you feel like you need to eat? If she says yes, we feed her. Here, you notice we don't ask a doctor. We ask her. Mikan ve'elech, so after seven days, she falls into everybody else's category. You don't count 72 hours from the birth. We don't allow her to eat Yom Kippur unless she said, because now she's already beyond the third day, she would have to say Tzrichani because she's not within the Mies Leis. That means I gave you the example where mm-hmm. sometimes it'll if if you just count that partial day as one day because uh, mm-hmm. par, partial mm-hmm. days mm-hmm. Uh, partial day is like a full day right and then you have Thursday and Friday mm-hmm. that would be oh, bad for her. We do not count the three days based on the precise time of the birth seventy two hours from then but rather based on the day itself. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the day of the birth is considered the first day, even if it's very late in the day. So you're going to lose out those hours that could get you into Yom Kippur. <coughs> and if Yom Kippur is the fourth day, day, even if it's less than 72 hours have passed since the birth, the Yom Kippur must fast, unless she's one of those persons that says Tzri Chani. Mm-hmm. Now, the Mishnah notes that some disagree with the Shulchan Aruch and hold that one may calculate the three days as a precise 72-hour period. Therefore, a Yoledet may eat until exactly 72 hours have passed, which, were, which would permit her to eat on part of Yom Kippur if the time limit expires in the middle of the day of Yom Kippur. And then she has to stop. 
then she can't, right? It's not like you have, oh, since I violated already, I might as well go. No, she has, she has to stop. Ain't more than some may slays. I and Le'el Simon, Shin Lamed Mishta Bura, the Kama Poiskim Soivrim, the Yomim Elo, the Milas Le'es, she a Iroso. It goes from the time itself. The Eshalaki Lamaisa, Chaim Latsasi, Bishos Yaakov, the Mekil, the Sophic Nafashas, Lachshon Vashiva Yomim Me'es Le'es, Lo Yifsid. You haven't lost anything if you if you do May's lays. And then he says, Lo Sisana Klau, Afilu Amra Ein Atzri Chalechol, if you're, within th- if you're within the three days, even if she says, I, I don't need to eat, machil no so, you feed her against her will. Mm-hmm. But not sheer. Now, and, and if, if, it's if, if, if she doesn't say, I don't want, you can feed her regularly. So you can see there's a conflict among the poskim, uh, whether you can feed her regularly or pochus pochus mikashir. Now the piske tshuva clarifies that the three day period begins only after the birth, and notes that the accepted Allah is to follow the mishmar mm-hmm. that we calculate the three days based on a seventy two hour period in most cases. The da kiavshni krisiu lenis leinish lodisanim mishashem aschilim etfasimonim anis kolayel. We're going to talk about. The very simonim, how do we know that she's in labor? She crouches. She can't walk. Her water spills. But So you don't calculate the three days from then. You calculate until until the birth actually happens. So you, you get a kula there. Well, it's a big kula. Because it could be 12 hours. The, 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 the sure. processing of later could have started 12 hours before. Is there any mention whether it's a cesarean or it's natural birth? Because there is. surgery... She's certainly going to be a chola. Uh, She's certainly going to be a chola. More, more of a problem. Uh, but it says the shat leya. The shat leya means from the time that she gave birth. Right? No, because it says yoledes. Toch shlosha yomim lo So we're going to see when it comes when it comes to chilul shabbos, what qualifies it. See there, it's a it's a it's a leniency the other way. You can already violate Shabbos from the moment she's called a Yoledes. Mm. Yoledes isn't just she's actually given birth. It could be the 12 hours before. Her water spilled. Or she sits on the birthing chair. So you could already violate Shabbos. Mm-hmm. So there you could have said, well, since she's already considered a Yoledes then because you can violate Shabbos. So this is a huge kula that said that we that the, the, the 72 hours doesn't start until actually, she actually gave birth. So, Maskara um, Samishnabura, um, that means from exactly the time that she gave birth, 72 hours. 72 shows He says, if the 72 hours goes a little bit into Yom Kippur, says like this. Some poskim will hold. If it's only into Yom Kippur two, three hours, you shouldn't allow her to eat those two, three hours. Because it's the, 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 the stopping for two, three hours is not going to make a big difference. The yesh cholkin, the sovereign shem ikra din, mutr lalech of lishos b'shos Others say, no, no, we don't care about that. If the 72 hours extend, let's say into 10 o'clock at night on Yom Kippur, she's allowed to eat to 10 o'clock at night. We don't have to calculate, oh, you know, she could have gone right. without this, yeah. So if she, after those hours, feels, I'm, I'm feeling good, and her, the people who are taking care of her feel that she's okay, she can she should fast. Because the Because it's a remarkable thing. Because we always thought that once you violate the fast, well, the whole thing is over. Maybe you can keep eating. No. Chazal give you a, these dinim. You can eat until here, you can't eat. And beyond that, you, can eat, you can't eat anymore. So it's not that the fast is ruined. The chosebi yoledes beleder regilo. So this is uh, Harold or Bernie or whoever. That's a regular birth. Aval yoledes benituach kesari dinaka chola da alma. The yeshlo leechol kefil rasa rofim. It depends on what the doctors say. Like what they said about any chola. 
a doctor sometimes will say, yeah, he's, he's a chola, but he can eat. Right? So here, the, 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 the C-section gives you even beyond seven days. If you let this without C-section, it all stops at seven days. But she might be considered a chola, maybe if the doctor thought 10 days or 14 days. Now, what stage of labor, like Walter asked, is a woman considered to be Yoledis? Although we saw that the counting of three days during which the mother may not fast begins only following the birth, the Mishnah birth states that a woman in active labor is already considered a Yoledis based on principles delineated in Hilchah Shabbos concerning when she can chal Shabbos. Therefore, such a woman may still eat on Yom Kippur. And vice versa. So we, we go the other way. If her latest starts on Yom Kippur, and it's 12 hours before her later, she's because her later, she can also eat. She's in pain. So he first does the Hilchah Shabbos, where the Shulchan Aruch offers three possible ways of assessing when a woman in labor has the status of your lettuce. When can you desecrate Shabbos? So it says, Shulchan Aruch, Nikros your lettuce, the Chalal Shabbos, Mishateshev ala Majber. They would sit down on the birthing <laughs> stool. Oh, Misha Shadam Shoyse is for she's bleeding. Oh, Misha Shabusea, Noisoy Sob is Rosea, she ain't but Kotlalik, she can't walk. So her friends have to schlep her. Even Shanira Echomel, all you need is one of these simonim, Mechalalim Alea Esa Shabbos. Now, one who is ill, which is Sakonis Nefoshois, and is certainly permitted and obligated to eat. Now, first of all, how do we determine whether he's dangerously ill? According to the Gmoran Yuma, we evaluate his condition using mumchim, which usually means doctors. If no doctor is available, we trust the person himself to inform us if he feels he needs to eat. Chole, machil nosol pi bikin, the main sham bikin, machil nosol pi atzmo, at shiyom or dam. Okay. So, yeah, you can stop. <laughs>